Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we'll be undertaking the topic of a stern tube system and we'll be discussing the traditional stern tube system which utilizes the lube oil supply as a virtue of pressure or head and the traditional sealing assembly. So let us start. As we all know that propulsion on board a ship is finally executed with the help of a propeller and this propeller is mounted on a propeller shaft. So the tail shaft which protrudes through the structure through the suitable opening at the stern then further to adjoin into the propeller shaft or the transmission shaft or an intermediate shaft would need a sealing assembly to make sure that the space which is created for this shaft to protrude inside is sealed or cordoned off properly and this is done with the help of the sealing arrangement on a stern tube. Also, the stern tube supports this shafting system at the terminating end that is the stern end and further allows the shafting to connect with the intermediate shaft and the main engine shaft. The support is a virtue of the solid structure of the stern tube bearing the aft and the forward sealing system and also the lubrication and the oil supply system. So to understand how this system works now let us first of all understand the different parts of it. As I already told that both the supporting part of the shaft as well as the role of sealing any ingress or outgress of water or oil is done by the stern tube assembly. So the first thing that we require is a solid casing which is the casing structure or the outer shell under which all the stern tube assembly is supported. Then we require a sealing assembly. So first of all the sealing assembly which would be at the extremity that is the aftmost part would do the job of making sure that no water ingress is occurring in towards the shafting system or towards the inside of the vessel and that is why it is supplied with oil under pressure and utilizes lip seals which are also regarded as aft seals or the traditional aft stun tube seals. Also because of the size and the length of this structure we would be requiring a support as well as a lubrication system and sealing system on the forward end that is the adjoining end of the stern tube system as we move from aft to forward and this is known as the forward seal side. The stern tube bearing would also consist of aft and forward liners upon which these seals would be pressing and the stern tube bearing that encloses the remaining part of the stern tube. The stern tube system also contains the different tanks from which as a virtue of pressure and height due to gravity the oil flow will take place or it can also take place as a virtue of forced supply with the help of pumps. These tanks would be the high and low storage tanks, the aft seal supply tank or the aft seal tank which would again be bifurcated into high and low tanks and also the forward seal tank. Also, like any other lube oil system, there would be a sump tank from which the oil supply would be given into the main storage tanks. And there can be, in some cases, a separate drain collection tank also within which the drain oil or the reject oil from the system can also go. In typical or traditional systems, there would also be a drain collection tank predominantly for the water that is from the outermost side, whatever negligible amount of water is seeping into the system as a virtue of the absence of 100% sealing and thus getting collected into this separate collection tank or drain tank. Now imagine that your propeller shaft is rotating and on it is the bearing that is the stern tube bearing which we just right now talked about. So obviously the bearing and the shafting assembly would need lubrication and separation. This is provided by the supply of oil from the header tanks or basically what we call as the storage tanks as well depends on the nomenclature that can be used on board your ship or within the designing of the ship. So these header tanks would have adequate valve arrangements to supply this oil which in our diagram can be seen from the wall number 3 and 6 going to the wall number 15 and thus this supply of oil would be continuous and thus there would be an outlet also which can be seen from the wall number 13 and further through wall number 7 and 8 going back into the system. So 
This oil is supplied as a virtue of pressure which is created due to the head due to the gravity and this is as a virtue of the height at which the tank is located. Now, as we had discussed earlier that there would be aft seals and the forward seals. So, these seals are basically lip seals and the lip seals are nothing but a radial seal that is pressed onto the surface of the liner that is the aft side liner or the forward side liner depending upon which seal we are talking about and this seal in turn is pressed by the garter spring and the sealing surface of this lip seal is then further supported by the support column which is then further integrated onto the main structure. So this entire assembly is what we call as the stern tube seal assembly. Now for the seal to press onto the surface of the liner to make sure that there is no ingress within the system or through the system and also for the lubrication to happen between the surfaces that the liner and the seal, we would again need the supply of oil. So, this supply of oil as I had explained earlier can be carried out in different manner that is for the aft seal tank because there is always a pressure of water that is exerted on the aft seals. So, the aft seal tank it is very important that these tanks have to be located at a certain height as we had discussed earlier that due to the virtue of height and the gravity the oil has to exert a certain amount of pressure which should be equal to the pressure that is exerted due to the water from the outside. So that is why now for us to understand logically this pressure that is exerted due to the water from the outside would be different in case of ballast and also in case of laden. So that is why we have two tanks the high and the low tank where we can adequately switch the tanks depending upon the condition which the vessel is in. So from these tanks the oil will be supplied depending on our selection through the wall number 9 or 10 and would then further go into the sealing system and then again as all oil supplies need to have an outlet if it has to be a constantly running or utilizing system these would be going through the top and then back to the tank from walls number 11 and 12. These aft seal tanks depending upon the high or low location would be marked distinctively and there are often procedures that are set up either in the control room and as well as locally at the location of these walls to make sure that the changeover does take place. In many of our systems we also have indications where the changeover of this wall have a certain electrical switch which has to be connected in tandem with the draft condition and if the valve is not changed over then either you will get a signal or an alarm or an audio visual trigger which will remind you that the changeover has to take place. The aft seal tanks would be supplied by the main storage tank and this has to be a process where there can be walls located into the system and can be turned by the manual filling or as a virtue of non-return walls also which can automatically do this job depending upon the design that is there in your system. Now for forward seal tanks and the forward seal the logic even though it remains same it's a little less complicated because obviously this system is inward there is no direct water pressure and whatever has to be done is with respect to the sealing of the ingress of particles dirt and other contagious elements that are present in the surroundings of the engine room. So the pressure that needs to be created for the sealing of these seals onto the liner is not as high as required for the aft seals. So these seals are supplied by the forward seal tank which can be manually filled also and again by the same logic of auto supply would allow the oil to circulate through its system. In most cases you will find that the stern tube seals are of nitrile rubber type as because these rubbers have a very good property of being heat resistant and also being flexible in nature. However, certain thermoelastomers are also being used nowadays depending upon the amount of expenditure that the installation companies can do or the technology that they have in place and these obviously will have a higher lifespan because these are much more heat resistant and also have the ability to return back to their original size and structure and hence will have longer replacement and overhaul intervals. The nickel chrome liners upon which these seals are pressing against are installed because in a nutshell the common logic that we apply anywhere that we do not replace the main part when a certain wear down is expected but we rather install a sacrificial piece or an intermediate piece which can be used as the replacement element. 
So these liners due to their easy removal as well as installation process and the cost effectiveness also are the parts upon which the seals are pressing so that if tomorrow there is a wear down indeed then these liners are the ones that are subjected to the extraordinary circumstances and thus replaced or considered for replacement accordingly without any permanent indentation onto the shafting system. This helps us to understand this compact yet effective design of the stern tube system or the stern tube bearing that has been used for a very long period of time on board ships. In continuity of it, we in the next video would also be discussing the different elements that are related to the troubleshooting of such stern tube systems, the lineup of walls under different case of emergencies and the other practical aspects related to the operation of such a stern tube system. Please make sure to like our videos and subscribe our channel and share these with your colleagues and friends. Thank you.